Hello, this is Joe Neville and welcome to Login with Python. This is the second video in my new series looking at Python and Aruba OS CX. In this video we're going to be using Swagger to help build REST calls. Then we're going to write a simple Python script for our Aruba OS CX switch. Quick recap for those not in the know, Aruba OS CX is a new operating system and it's got a large REST API on it. Okay, the aim of this video is to create a login and logout script in Python. So first of all, we're going to look at Swagger and then we're going to move on to the login and logout function in Python. And you could ask, is that it? It's quite simple, the steps here, but the login and logout is the foundation of everything that you're going to subsequently do. So I thought it was that important that it warranted its own video. Right, here are our tasks. First, we need to prep our Python setup. So we're gonna have to do some installs. You might already have these, but if you were starting fresh, what you'd need to do is an install of Python 3 pip. We'll go into that. And then you need to install the third party Python library of requests, because that's what I'm gonna use in my script. Then we write and run our script. Here's my working environment. I'm running a Fedora 27 virtual machine on a Windows 7 host. First of all, we need to make sure that we've got pip for our Python packages that we're going to install. I should say that I'm using Python 3. If you're using Python 2, you really should think about migrating onto Python 3 as soon as possible. So for Fedora to install pip, it is sudo dnf install python3 pip. If I run that, I've already got um, that installed. So I'll just show you so you can see there that it's skipping that. Now the next install is to install the request library. So that will be Pip through install requests. Okay, uh, we're skipping that because I've already got that installed. So do those two steps first. Now we jump over to the Swagger UI on our CX switch. As I showed you in the last video, we just scroll down to login. There we are. Open that up. So we're going to do a post call to our URL and it's going to end with this login okay in the url now you can interact with the switch um using the swag ui as i did in the last video uh and so you enter your username and your password and it does hide your password but when you send it it does display on the screen here it would display the password so i've used a fake password because i don't want to sh share that so i've used the the username as admin and the password fake news which actually fails but in the script i'm going to show you a way of actually hide it now if you think that's a security uh, problem don't worry about the interaction between the switch and the swag ui normally because it uses https it's just the fact that if you're using swagger it will display the password up on your screen just something to be aware of okay so but the point here is that the request url that we'll need for our python script is the is here it's https it's the ip address of the switch then it's rest v1 login and we need to include the credentials of the username and the password now for the logout we do something very similar we do a post to the logout there okay now in this with swagger you just hit submit so there's no additional credentials that you need to enter okay so the swagger part's quite simple now let's jump over to our python environment okay i'm going to be using the ide pycharm for this setup here is a template of the python script that we're going to build i've called it login template one now what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to recreate that as a new script and I'm going to go through it line by line. So let's move this, split that vertically, okay. Create a new Python file. 
we'll call it login one fine not add it to git right now okay right so we're, we're just going to go through uh line by line so first of all we need to import so this is the third party library that will handle our requests for us so that's what we've installed via pip and we're going to import from the standard library get pass so i'll show you that that get pass is great because it allows you to ask for the password and it doesn't display it on your on the screen so i'll show you that now this is some i'll copy this across here so this insecure request warning that's so that we don't keep getting a warning displayed if we do any prints or when we do our login because we're running https but this is just in the lab so i don't have a trusted ca a certificate authority or pki or anything set up like that so it it would warn normally um, this just turns that off so it's quite useful for when you're building your scripts like this okay next up what we need to do is we need to create the objects for so these are python objects that are going to store the username and the password for us so it'll be username equals so this is so the, the it's going to be an object called username and the next part is how do we import that information into this object so we're going to ask for it so when we run the script what we're going to have is displayed on the screen is enter username and then whatever is entered at that point will be put into the python object of username okay next up password here we're going to use get pass and it's dot get pass so that's part of the standard library that's all you need to enter it will display a message saying password on the screen and then you can type in your password and it's not displayed next up for us is the base url so this is the or this is an object that's going to store the basic part of the URL that you send, which will be the same for each one of your REST calls. You keep that part that's the same, so it's the HTTPS, the IP address, REST, and V1, and then you just change the last part. So the suffix of that will change to login or log out. So it's useful to have a Python object that stores that standard default information for you. So we create a string for for that. Now I need to put in the IP address of the switch. Obviously you put your own IP address for your own switch in there. And don't forget that last forward slash there at the end of that string. Okay okay good right now we are going to create because actually from the username and password python objects we need to actually create a dictionary that we're going to feed into our post call for our login so i've called that creds for credentials so that's the string of username so that the string is the key and then the value is the python object from above so that's a, so don't get confused here that's a string that will become the key in the dictionary and that username there is actually the python object so that information there comes at the input that who, whatever we enter at the enter username prompt that will be fed into the dictionary um, as the key there okay good now the next part of course is the password and again it's a string and then the string is the key and then the password is the python object 
Right, next up, we're going to utilize the requests library to create a session. So first of all, we need to create an object which is going to hold the session. The great thing about this is that it will store the cookie, so we don't have to do any parsing of the cookie. Now, if you're confused about this stuff, I did do a video, which I'll put a link on screen for it right now, which tells you that shows you the difference between using the requests cookie jar method and parsing the returned cookie sounds confusing i've got a whole video on it please watch that if you need any extra information so for this part it's request dot session okay we're going to call that right now we're on to our specific login so we create a login object so that we can handle any responses. You can just run the post call and it will run, but it's nice to have an object which will store any responses from the switch. So I've created a Python object of login, and then I'm going to use the request session to run the post for me. Then it's the base URL that we're entering, and I'm just going to add the string of login so that's the last part so we'll get the combination of this base URL up here plus uh, that's why it's great to make sure that you don't forget this final um, forward slash there because then you can just type the login there you don't have to include the login in each one um, the, fo the forward slash in each one of your strings here so we just create the base URL and we which is a string and then we add this login to the end Next up, we need to include the credential. So that's the parameters. So parameters equals cred. So that's going to be that dictionary that's fed into there. Next up, we want to turn off verification because we're not going to, because this is HTTPS, we don't want to verify. If you forget this, it actually fails each time. So make sure you include that. And then finally, I like to include a timeout. So if we can't reach the switch it just it doesn't just hang forever okay that's our login call done now we're going to print to screen some useful information so we want to know how our login went whether it was successful so i've created a string login status and then i am going to display the status code now this is one of the reasons why i created the login object here is so that once the post call has gone out for the login and the switch has responded the response information is stored in this python object of login and then we can call that later on to display information such as the status code for us OK, now one of the things you should note as well is that the login status is just an arbitrary string, but the login status code is an integer. So you can't just do a string plus an integer. You'll get an error for that. What I've done there is I've just closed off the string, put a comma, and so there'll be, in, there'll be a space in between. I've included the space in the string there, and then the login status code will be displayed. Next, another string for cookie. And again, we call login and cookies. Okay, right, so that's our login. So we've got the combination there of the login call plus we're, then we're going to print to screen some useful information that came from the login and we want to do pretty much the same thing with log out so really to save time what we can do is we just copy all of that so now i'll create a log out object now it's the post again same this is why you create this bit base url because you can just call it again all we've got to do is change that last part there from login to log out. We don't need the credentials actually. We're not going to use that because the cookie jar includes it is included, sorry, in the S object here. 
Right, so we don't need that. Good, right. Let's change the log out. We'll have the log out status code and we're not going to include the cookie because we're logging out. So we'll just get rid of that to close it off. Okay, fine. So I think that looks okay. Now we've done the script, I've jumped over to my Fedora CLI, do an LS, and then you can see there's our login one Python script. So I am going to go ahead and run that. Login Python, there we are. Okay, so now what you can see on the screen is the enter username so that's what i input inputted here okay that's what's being displayed and that will show now the password this is coming from that get pass so that's the, the password see i haven't included that string of the password um, that's automatically generated because i've called on the get pass library there So I entered the password and nothing was displayed on the screen. Right, and um, as we jump ahead, so that's that's actually run all the way through for us. So if I can bring that across, okay, there we go. Right, what we've got, login status is 200, so that's good. And the cookie is displayed there. So the, it, this is the cookie actually here. Okay, now we've got a logout of 200. So we logged in and we logged out. Let me just run that again for you so you can see the whole thing so admin enter the password it's not displayed on screen good stuff login there's the cookie and log out right now why I wanted to show you the cookie is because if you want to check about the login and log out to the switch, I've jumped over to the switch here. So this is an 8400 running the latest version of CX. Okay, so 006, we're okay, great. Now, what you can do is you can look in the log, so show events, which will show us a lot of information. But what you can do is drill down into the specific events. So we want the rest events. So it will just show us the rest events okay now if we look at the bottom there we should have right we should see a login and a logout for our user so 27 zw let's jump across let's jump back 27 zw there you see that's our login so here it is this is our login you've got Authentication succeeded for user admin with session, and this is this is our guy, and you can see it on the screen. Which one is it? It's this guy here, and you can see it there. For the session was started, and then we've got the session ending for that guy. So if I run run that again, one more time. We're looking for the user, okay, it's 7NU6Q. There we are, 7NU6Q, authentication succeeded, the session started, then we did the immediate logout, so we have another authorization for a post action, remember the logout is a post action, and that's us logging out there. That's how to create a simple login and logout script in Python for a Ruber OS CX then. Coming up in the next video, we're going to take that further and we're going to be configuring features on CX. So we're going to be doing some more REST calls. We're going to use Swagger to configure the device. So we'll probably do configuration of some VLANs and then we're going to move that over into a Python script, copying the URL links into Python so that we can do our login configure and log out again so i hope you'll join me for that please do like comment share and subscribe this video it does make a difference thanks for watching my name's joe neville and goodbye